Hello everyone. In this recording, we are going to discuss the introduction to cost accounting. Now, before we get into the cost accounting concepts, we need to discuss the difference between what you learned in financial accounting versus what managerial accounting is all about. And a good subset of managerial accounting is cost accounting. Now, managerial accounting or management accounting, the focus is not on preparing financial statements for external users. The focus is on internal. So the managerial accountants, they're going to do some analysis internally. They're going to work on internal reports. It's not necessarily following GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles. Basically, it's the way I like to explain it to students is managerial accounting is more of an art. There are really no set rules. You know, whatever works for your company, you can use. Whatever report you can think of, whatever analysis you can think of, you can use internally as long as it assists you in your analysis to help the company grow. Versus financial accounting, you know, financial accounting, there are a set of rules. Financial accounting is not an art. Financial accounting is more of a science. There's certain rules that we need to, we need to follow gap, the, the financial statements need to look in a certain format, and so we're, we're doing a lot of uh, rules-based approach, if you will, with financial accounting. And that's basically what we're talking about here. Cost accounting, which is the title of this course, cost accounting is a subset of managerial accounting, and cost, cost accounting, we are going to basically analyze how costs how expenses flow through the organization. There's going to be a big emphasis on manufacturing companies in this organization. So a little different from what you learned in financial accounting. With financial accounting, the emphasis was more of a, on a merchandising or a service company, where if it was a service company, there really wasn't any inventory. If it was a merchandising company, they typically bought inventory that was already finished and they put it on their shelves and they sold it to the end user more of a wholesale or a retailer in this company manufacturing we actually have to produce the inventory we have to buy a whole bunch of raw materials add labor add overhead to come up with our finished product and so as you can imagine just listening to me talk how long and how tedious that could be and and Wow, where do the costs go to the individual products? Um, and that's where cost accounting comes into play. And that's what we're going to learn a lot in this particular course. Okay, um, let me see. This is an excellent slide. I love this slide. This is one of the biggest, uh, biggest items here in the first chapter. Really understanding the difference between management or managerial and financial accounting. You can see... On the top of the slide, the purpose of the information, financial accounting is really to prepare the external reports, the financial statements, what you learned in financial accounting, the balance sheet, the income statement, the cash flow statement, the statement of stockholders' equity. And that is basically going to external users like the banks, like investors, like the IRS. Managerial accounting, on the other hand, the primary purpose is to prepare internal reports. So we're talking about budgets. We're talking about forecasts. And we're going to learn all of this in this class. We're talking about flowing the costs through the inventory system, which is a very big component of this cost accounting class. And the primary users are the internal management. The focus. Financial accounting is all past information. When we prepare, when we sit down and prepare a balance sheet, an income statement, a cash flow statement, we're, lock, we're looking at information that occurred or transactions that occurred in the past. However, our managerial accounting reports, when we're looking at budgets and forecasts and whatnot, our expectation is looking at what might happen. It's more really an expectation of what might happen in the future. How about rules? Like I said, financial accounting is really rules-based. We need to be in accordance with GAAP. 
Um, we need to get certified through external uh, independent uh, auditors. Um, managerial accounting is basically, like I said, it's an art class. There are really no rules. You know, whatever works, whatever floats your boat internally within the company, those are the reports that we are going to build on. Okay. Now, financial accounting reports, they're typically annual reports. You could have quarterly and monthly reports as well, but it's typically annual and quarterly, which are the big ones, especially for publicly traded companies. Managerial accounting reports, it can go out multiple years, sometimes 10, maybe even 20 years, trying to forecast uh, the, the business lines you want to get into and where you want to expand and, and whatnot. So it really helps the planning process and growth of the company in the future. Managerial accounting is very, very different. And um, so anyway, very, very good slide. I love this slide. Um, it really puts it into focus, especially when you're pretty new in your accounting studies. Okay. Managerial accountants are going to make a lot of decisions internally within the company's growth and which direction they're going to go in. All right. And that's basically what are we talking about? We're talking about strategy. Strategy specifies how an organization matches its own capabilities. So we know we're studying our own internal company and how we can match it with the world, which is basically the marketplace. What does the world need and how can we bring that to them? If you think about a company like Amazon, right? Amazon does everything now. Think about how our lives are connected. You know, Amazon is one of the first companies that roll off your tongue. Now, when you think of when Amazon started, it basically started as an online bookstore. <laughs> so it's grown tremendously, tremendously. Not many people think about Amazon as an online bookstore anymore. Okay, so certainly we're going to look at strategy in this class. And basically, we're going to use these strategies to focus on our cost accounting and, and look and study our internal costs. Okay, um, the value chain and the supply chain. This is something we want to talk about a lot when we're talking about internal managerial accounting. We want to create value to our customers. All right. If we're not creating value for our customers, we're going to fall behind in the competition. So creating value is so very important. When we're sitting there and we're planning and we're, we're strategizing, we want to always think about creating value for our end customers. Value is what gives our customers uh, the opportunity to continue with our company and to grow our business. All right. We want good customer experiences. And you've heard about this before outside of the whole accounting realm, I'm sure. Customer experience is so important and it really truly is. But the underlying uh, strategy by the managerial accountants and the cost accountants are part of that. Um, is definitely something, it's, it's behind the scenes, it's not glorious, but it's something that will ultimately bring value to our customers. Okay, the value chain. All right, so what does a company do internally to bring value to customers? The first thing we do is R&D. And if you haven't heard of that term before, R&D, it is an acronym for research and development. It has to start there. We have to start with researching and developing new products, All right? And then once we've gotten to a point where we think we want to develop a, a certain product, we are then going to design that product. And of course, all the processes that go along with the design. Now we have a design, now we're going to start to produce. And on the production line, basically you've heard of the assembly line before. Typically people think about an automobile plant, right? You think about the rubber and the glass and the metal and the engines and the radios and the tires and whatnot. These are all raw materials, but they all get put together nicely on an assembly line. And ultimately, at the end of the assembly line, you have a finished product. So the production, we're going to concentrate a lot here in this course 
on the costs that go into the production. And then once we uh, produce our product, we're not going to be able to sell it unless we market it. So that's where your marketing class comes into play, your marketing classes. I'm sure most of you are going to take multiple classes. And then once we market and we build up uh, customer demand for our product, then we got to start to distribute them. Right? And we'll have distribution centers. And then ultimately it all comes back to customer service. We want to be able to make sure that our customers are satisfied with our product. Okay, um, CRM, this is an acronym that you will hear in the business world. CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management. And CRM, basically, um, the, the, best co the, the companies that have best CRM are the ones that have an underlying technology where they're keeping track of customer tastes, customers' needs, um, customers' uh, wants, and, uh, and keeping updated with them and keeping in contact with them. So certainly a CRM technology um, so we can, we, can, um, we can deal with our customers and, and service our customers appropriately. Okay, now let's take a look. Okay, what are the key success factors in a company? When we use a value chain, um, and of course, the, the su supply chain, which is basically supplying our customers, um, we are going to look at number one, cost and efficiency. And like I said, cost accounting, we're going to spend a lot of time here on the costs and being efficient with our, with our, with our costs. Quality, of course, we want quality and we're going to have a quality control system. Time, right? We don't want our customers to uh, wait a long time for their products. So, I'm sure you've heard of the term JIT, just-in-time inventory, where we're going to take our customers' orders, and, but we're going to order our inventory just in time to get it to the customers timely so we don't have a lot of cost in, um, in storing a, a big warehouse full of raw materials, and we're just going to try to make sure our time is spent well. We need to innovate. We can't just lay our hats and say, hey, we have one product that's successful and just lean on that product forever. No, we need to innovate. Think about a company like Blockbuster Video. They're no longer around. They didn't innovate. They didn't catch up with the technology. There might be some of you in this class that have never seen a VCR tape before. All right, but obviously Blockbuster Video was their whole entire organization was established based on this new technology where we can actually buy a videotape and play it, hook it up to our TVs and play the actual movie um, through our TV screens. Well, that time has come and gone, as you all know. There's no need for VCRs anymore. Blockbuster did not keep up with the technology, so companies need to continue to innovate. And of course, if they keep continuing to innovate, Hopefully, that will lead to sustainability where the company will adapt to the technological and the social changes within society. Okay, decision making. We are going to see a lot managerial, internal management accountants. They are going to be a valuable part of the decision making process. And on this slide, we are going to see that there are five steps in the decision-making process. Number one, we need to identify the problem. Honestly, I can't tell you how many organizations, they have underlying problems, but they don't take the time to identify those problems. So the time they are, they do get realized that there are problems. The problem is too large to tackle. We don't want to get to that point. We want to constantly be on the lookout for potential bubbles, potential problems, potential uncertainties. And we want to get ahead of the curve. Once we identify the problem, we're going to obtain as much information as possible about whatever problem is in front of us. And then once we obtain all the information, we're going to start to predict how the future would go with this potential problem and, and how we want to combat that problem. And we will do so by choosing among alternatives. Alternative one, alternative two, alternative three. Let me give you an example. 
let's say that we know that there's a new technology coming out for um, Microsoft Windows systems, and uh, we're, we're already two systems behind. You know, we're going to fall behind the the eight ball if we don't catch up with the technology really fast. So we need to decide which alternative we should go in. All right. And then, of course, once we have our alternatives laid out in front of us, we are going to pick one and we're going to implement the decision. And once we implement the decision, it doesn't stop there. A lot of companies will stop there once they've made a choice and they say done and they move on to the next potential problem. That is a big mistake. Once you implement the decision, you need to stay and evaluate the performance of that decision. We are, and, and of course, learn. It's a constant learning process. If we just kick back and, and think everything's going to be fine and, and we don't innovate and we don't look for problems and we don't make changes, our company is going to go under really, really fast. You can see how important accountants are to the success of a business. We may not play a uh, uh, a magical role. We may not play, you know, the, the 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 starring role, but without the backbone of the accounting and the accounting system and the accountants making decisions, the company will not survive. Okay, planning. So let's talk a little bit about planning. Planning is when we are setting the organization's goals and strategies. And from there, we are going to predict results using our alternatives that we talked about in the decision-making process. And certainly, we are going to decide how we're going to attain those goals. So we have to implement a process. And here's a big one, number four. During the planning stage, we need to communicate these goals and the process of how to achieve them to the entire organization. I worked for an organization one time where everybody from the director of the department all the way down to the secretary of the department, everybody was involved in preparing the budget for the following year. And so we all knew and we all had we all had expertise. Some of us a small piece, but some of us a larger piece, but we all had some sort of expertise in the process. As an example, Let's take a very simple example, ordering office supplies for the department. You know who had the expertise in my example? Not the director, not the accounting manager, but the secretary. The secretary, the office secretary. She knew exactly how much of supplies to order on a weekly basis. That person was the expert in that particular area. So including, my point is this, include everyone in the planning. It doesn't matter the seniority level of the position. And then once you plan, you have to control. Planning and control go together. Control is when we take action to implement the plan. And that's when we're going to evaluate the plan and the implementation. And we're going to constantly learn. If we implement the plan and, and it wasn't the right direction that we found out after, you know, uh, afterwards and we see that the performance isn't as expected we can go back and we can change all right it's a constant learning process so we also we always need the feedback to help our future decision making it's a constant cycle it never ends okay um we're going to see an org chart for an organization, at least in, in the finance section. You can see that the CEO is really the, the, the top dog the day -to -day in the day-to-day -day organization. Now, they're hired by the board of directors. The board doesn't work on day-to-day -day activity, but they set direction of the organization. They hire the CEO. Underneath the CEO is usually the CFO, which is the chief financial officer. And you can see underneath the CFO, there are various divisions. Um, now, the controller, underneath the controller, this is where you're going to have a lot of the, not only the financial accountants, as we taught, as you guys learned in earlier class, but you're also going to look at the managerial accountants. And that's where we're going to look at the operations and, and look at all the decision making. Uh, this is beyond the accounts payable and the accounts receivable and the payroll and the general ledgers and preparing the financial statements. 
This is actually looking at inventory processes and the like. And cost accounting plays a big role in that. Okay, managerial accountants, they're going to work within the, the actual teams um, that are on the production line. Um, they're going to be, um, they, they're going to work with the, the, uh, the vendors, the suppliers, the customers. So they're going to work um, as business partners. They're going to look and analyze situations. They are going to make decisions. They are going to, and it's not always going to be an easy decision. Um, and they're going to have to analyze their decisions uh, afterwards and, of course, make adjustments as necessary. We need to have, we need to be leaders. Managerial accountants need to be leaders. They need to know how to motivate people. They need to know how to communicate. That is so very important, communication. And, of course, have high integrity. As with any aspect of business, ethics is critically important. Um, the Institute of Management Accountants, which is an organization where manage it's kind of equivalent to the AICPA, um, but specifically for managerial accountants. The four ethical standards, this is something you need to know. Number one, competence. Number two, confidentiality. Number three, integrity. Number four, credibility. So management accountants... Um, need to have these standards for ethical conduct. Competent. They need to be competent accountants. They need to keep information confidential. They need to have integrity and, of course, credibility. People need to believe them. Okay. And last but not least, I am sure you've heard about this in almost every business class you have taken and you will take in the future. This is called the Sarbanes-Oxley legislation, also known as SOX, S-O-X. It was passed quite a while ago now, 2002, um, in response to a series of corporate scandals and, of course, the terrorist attacks earlier in this century. Um, and basically, the Sarbanes-Oxley Act um, focuses on improving internal controls, uh, which certainly we will talk about in this course, governance of the organization, monitor, monitoring managers. Um, so this is something that is important as well in our studies of managerial accounting.